Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Dad Debate. This is episode one of the Dad Debate brought to you by the Dads Watching Sports. I am Michael Draper and I am joined tonight on the Dad Debate by Kyle Castles, the man, the myth, the legend. Kyle, how are you? Man, I am I'm doing good. I'm excited coming here and, and uh you know, if it's going to be a debate, I'm going to have to win. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to beat you down a little bit. I, uh, Kyle, I'm, I'm looking forward to your. Uh, well, let me tell you how it is. Well, let's let's talk about this. You know, all the little the little adjectives you throw out uh, on dads watching sports as you get ready to drop those truth bombs. Uh, but unfortunately for you tonight, you're going against yours truly, and so it doesn't matter what you break out, man. Uh, you are going down in this round of the dad debate. But thank you for listening. Thanks for joining us right now. We are broadcasting live on the RTF Sports Network and the Dads Watching Sports Facebook pages. Uh, so thanks for checking in with us and if you want to shoot us some comments uh throughout we've actually got a comment going on right now joshua van dyke says dad debate joshua you dang right and you know your boy kyle is going down yes the kyle is indeed the only time you've ever whipped me is when you pulled out a two by four and hit me in the back with it. and it's about to happen again my friend <laughs> it is about to happen again uh so just a little bit about this show so what we're doing if you guys have checked out dad's watching sports before you know we just kind of talk current events sports our dad lives as dads that kind of thing this is all about the debate it's all about three topics two dads boom boom and one winner winner chicken dinner and yeah kyle it's it's not going to be you so guys this is what we're going to do we've got a couple of topics uh for the show uh we were going to have matt kirk who's normally on our dad's watching sports show but uh matt is off with his lovely bride and lovely child um kyle if i remember correctly matt said that they were going to turks and caicos uh which is very exciting i mean you took a vacation to fiji a while back now Matt's going to Turks and Caicos. All I got was a vacation to Georgia uh, well, recently. So. You so like I've already beat you in the vacation, yeah. right? Matt's be, Matt's down there. I don't know sipping my ties and 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 whatnot. Uh, I'm sure he'll come back like a bronze god. That's right. Yes, he will. <laughs> uh, but Matt was supposed to be on, but he's celebrating in Turks and Caicos. So I stepped in. I'll normally do the moderating for the show, but I'm excited to uh, kick Kyle's butt tonight. Um, <laughs> All right, so Kyle, number one topic, my man. Firstly, the NFL Network released their 100 top 100 players list. It's always up for much debate. There's always a lot of uh, you know people that have their um, their thoughts about it. Whether people are too high, whether people are too low, who should be number one, whatnot. We thought, you know what, that's a perfect topic for us to kick off the dad debate on and with. So, Kyle, the question begs: You look at the top 100 list. Uh, Lamar Jackson was ranked number one. Uh, so I want you to tell me, should Lamar be number one? And if not, who else? And then I'm going to tell you exactly who it should be. Well, Lamar should not be number one. You're crazy. You're absolutely insane. Lamar should not be number one. We MVP? all know. What? Every, what? Okay, wait, wait. We all know that the only reason he won that MVP is because Patrick Mahomes, the second, was not in for two games. Even missing two games, he threw over 4,000 yards. You take, you give him those two games and he'll just have average games. Not those Patrick Mahomes games where he lights it up. Just an average Patrick Mahomes games. He's fifth in the league in yards, fifth in touchdowns. He was second in total QBR. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the NFL and has been for at least two years, if not all three. He's not even the best quarterback in the league, and that's because the number one player on the list should be the number one player of the list, and that's Lamar Jackson. And you know it pains me to say this, Kyle. I'm a big blue guy. I bleed blue. I'm a Kentucky fan through and through. So oh, you're so team. bad. So to, I'm going to go ahead and throw the L's down, uh, even though I'm voting for Lamar because L1C4, baby. Lamar Jackson is the number one player in the league. He's the most dynamic player. And the the biggest thing about Lamar Jackson, and I, you can say this about Mahomes a little bit, but Lamar is the number one player in this regard defenses have to change everything that they do when they face the baltimore ravens and that's because lamar jackson is in the backfield you don't know if he's going to run if he's going to throw he can make plays that no other athlete in that position can and that's why he should be the number one player which is why he's not the best quarterback because he's not a quarterback but it, this isn't the top 100 quarterback scott it's the top 100 players and lamar you jackson can't be, you can't be the best quarterback on the list if you're not actually a quarterback it's got to go to the guy that can sling the ball around and that is patty mahomes okay so we've got the reigning mvp 
We've got the most dynamic player in the league. The guy that can beat you in multiple ways. Defenses have to adjust to what he you has to do. Patrick Mahomes can beat you with his legs. He's just got a, a much better arm. He's got a better arm than Lamar, and he runs well enough he can beat you with his legs. Lamar's not even the second best quarterback in the league. The All second right, so, one's up there in Seattle. So, He's so, the third. So Joshua Van Dyke chimes in, plus Super Bowl champ and MVP. I'm guessing he's talking about Patty Ice. Well, um, absolutely. You know what, Joshua Joshua Van Dyke? I knew I didn't like that guy. Are, you are a brilliant, brilliant man. Well, I think you're just saying that because he's blood relation to you. But uh, <laughs> Look, I, just because I know that he is Joshua Ryan Van Dyke doesn't mean anything. Okay. Well, I'm still going Lamar. Uh, really, the only thing that I have to say against Lamar is you have to watch out for him late in the game. My man puts the ball on the ground a lot. If you look a couple of years ago against the Wildcats, gave up that fumble, Lamar. You can't be doing that, my man. Uh, you can't be doing look, that, but he is the number one player without a doubt. He's averaging like 200 yards passing a game. Like That's not a quarterback. The, but it's, I, I understand the game's changing. It changes look, the, we, have, we are seeing the game change, right? Like the three quarterbacks that have been mentioned in this thing are Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, and Lamar Jackson, and that is the order they go in. And look at where the yeah, NFL's yeah. got. <laughs> look at where the NFL's gone. Like twenty years ago, sure. we were talking about the best quarterbacks in the league being Peyton Manning. Steve McNair was there, right? Like he was a co MVP one year early two thousand. Yep. Don't don't make me say the exact year, but um, but no, like. Uh, the NFL's changing, and we're, we're we're getting more athletic quarterbacks, and we're doing that because if you've seen the guys coming off the edge, and JJ Watt and Khalil Mack, um, the, even Aaron Donald in the middle, like that sucker's a freak too. The, you got to put some freaks back there, but but to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to be able to throw the ball well into tight windows, and nobody does that better than Patrick Mahomes. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but at the end of the day, the number one player in the league is Lamar Jackson. Okay, we've got to move on, Kyle. So, um, the, next topic we, the, the next Point topic we wanted to uh, talk about with the top 100 players is, okay, we talked about who we both feel should be number one. We agreed it was Lamar. Uh, so we who do we, actually, who do we think who do we think should be ranked – or who is ranked too high? And should Lamar be Jackson. Lamar no, freaking Jackson. No way. Come on. Lamar give me give me your real answer. Come on. Okay. Okay. Uh, my other other one is uh, Christian McCaffrey. Um, and that's not a shot at Christian McCaffrey. What is he, like six or so? Um, he, I, I, it's not a shot at him. He, he's probably the best running back in the league. But in a league that does not value running backs, in a league that does not look up and go, this is the, you know, our guy – he can't be – you can't put running backs that high. If you got a running back in the top 25, they need to drop. Um, Lamar the, – the reason why Lamar Jackson probably just needs to, like, drop as well because he's a running back. He's not a quarterback. He's a running back that can throw instead of a quarterback that can run. Yeah. Let's okay. just be honest. We'll, 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 right? see. we'll see here. Um, again, Joshua chiming in here. Chad Kelly – I'm not even going to bring up being better than Lamar Jackson. Chad Kelly – couldn't get it done in Oxford. He's not going to get it done in the NFL uh, as well. So we're not even going to acknowledge that. Uh, all right. So the the person that I or the player I've got ranked too high, um, and Kyle, you know, you mentioned a, a running back doesn't need to be that high. Well, a tight end sure as heck doesn't need to be that high. Oh no, Ryan, George Kittle. George Kittle being that high man is a disgrace. Me? He's not even the best tight end in Whoa, the league. I, I would take Travis Kelsey or Gronk over him any oh, single day you, of the week. You have no idea what you're talking about. Well, absolutely do. No, George Kittle, just turn on the one play. I'm a Saints fan, right? I saw it. I watched it live. Turn on the play where he runs over the whole Saints defense. And you can't tell me that dude's a, not absolutely. A tight legit. end cannot impact the game like that, like in other skill positions can. So having a tight end in that high in the in the, the list Come I thought on. was a disgrace to the list itself. George Kittle, get out of here, man. I don't want anything to do with that. No, you did never talk bad about George Kittle again. I never. will. He, he plays Ever. for your one of your division rivals, and you're sitting here giving this guy oh, praise. Oh, Come on, not man. anymore. Not anymore. I'm, we're not in the NFC West anymore. We're in the South. It's oh, the, that's the, right. Yeah, the okay, I forgot. The they but still, I, I don't. I'm not a Niners fan. I am not a Niners fan. But you cannot help. I cannot help but love to sit down and watch George Kittle. Well, Kyle, let me tell you who was ranked too low, and it is someone in your beloved Saints division. And that's the GOAT, man. I don't care. He could be 45 freaking years old. And Tom Brady should be one of the top players in this list because of who he is, what he's able to do. And he's going to win your division, the NFC South. He's going to be this NFL MVP. And he's going to take the Bucks to the Super Bowl this year like I predicted 
after the Super Bowl. This wait, 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 what? You said that Brady was going to the Chargers well, and taking the Chargers just, to the Super Bowl. Uh, it was more of a Brady thing than it was. No, the shut, no that is yeah. absolute yeah. garbage. No, first on, off, dude. first off, let, let's just make sure we all understand ourselves. Brady is not Brady from 10 years ago. That dude it has have to be. He's dropped off. He is not even in the top 10 best quarterbacks in the league anymore. No way. No possible way. We'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see. Give me me Devlin Hodges. Give me Duck Devlin Hodges over Tom Brady. Write that down. Okay. Write that down. Writing it down. Duck. Thank you. There's no way. Brady, I don't even know if Brady belongs on top 100. Oh my goodness! When you said, when you, you said, come on now, you're, when you're you not, said you're, the go, when you said the go, I thought you meant Drew Brees. That's who I thought you were going with. Well, only, only in your mind, only in your mind, but that's okay. Oh, well, okay. then who do you have as the as two? Okay, so Tulo, there. Uh, uh, we were talking about. I was talking about some some freak athletes chasing around these quarterbacks, which is why quarterbacks like Tom Brady are not the future of the NFL. I didn't All say right? he's the future, but he's the. Present. I know, but he's not. He's not. Patrick Mahomes is the face of the NFL. Right. So, anyways, now let me actually give you the real answer here. The guy that was ranked too low is the guy that led the league in sacks and Shaq Barrett out of the books. Right. That dude, Jason Pierre Paul, with like walking around like this because he blew all his fingers off. Right. That's the, that's the other guy. That's the other guy on the other side. Right. But he, you can't sack the quarterback with like six fingers. So tell, don't talk to me about like Jay, he had Jason Pierre Paul on the side. No, he didn't. Shaq Barrett was being schemed against by the best offensive coordinators in football, and he was still racking up sacks at 19 and a half sacks for a season last year. Where was he on the list? Uh, he was down uh, in the 40s somewhere. Okay. So right, right. right where he should be is what you're getting. No, at. Not, no not where he should be. Yeah. There's no way that someone, you know, they had J.J. White, uh, White in front of him. They of had uh, Cam Jordan in front of him, which of I, I'm a Saints fan. Throw every but, Bosa ever ever living out. Oh, in come, are you well. serious? Come on. They're all they're all great, man. Come on. Come on. Now, look, Joey Bosa's good, but he's yeah. not better. Like, Shaq Barrett beat everybody in front of him. Teron Armstead's one of the best pass blocking left tackles in the league, and, and, and Shaq Barrett beat him religiously in the game in New Orleans. Shaq Barrett is <laughs> you did it backwards, but sure. Yeah, you know. I'm not Catholic. You're wrong again. Well oh You're wrong again. Okay. There we go. Give me Shaq Barrett, right? I appreciate um, Josh giving me the shout out Michael right where he should be exactly Josh. I appreciate you coming through with a little low love on my side this time just because you're related to the other guy. Come on. All right, Kyle. Well, let's move on. We've we've spent enough time for right now on the top 100 players. I think everybody can agree out there uh, that I was the most correct on those topics. And so thank no, you for that vote. Nobody uh, agrees with you. But in, in all seriousness, we do have a few people watching. Uh, and for those that are listening in, that's one thing we want about this dad debate show. We want impact from we want uh, input from the pa- the fans and those listening. Yeah, I got you shook. You can't even talk. I got you shook yeah. with, with that argument. Absolutely, man. I'm too busy looking at your face over here. Is what's oh, my face sure. is beautiful. Look at yeah. that, man. Uh, so yeah, we uh, want input from the fans. Those that are listening out there, uh, you know, let us know if you're watching live uh, what you think about it. Let us know if you think we're wrong, if you think we're right, and then also if you're listening on our podcast. Uh, obviously, you can check it out anytime you want to. Shoot us a message via Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to reach out to us at uh, Dad's Watching Sports at gmail.com or find us at Dad's Watching Sports anywhere. And we would love to hear from you and what you what your take is on that. All right, Kyle, I'm really excited about this next topic. Uh, you know, we we host this show called Dad's Watching Sports. This is the Dad Debate. And we thought for the first episode of the Dad Debate, we've got to get a dad topic in because it only makes sense, right? And we it, can't do it, all sports. Well, all I don't know. That, can I agree with you? Even uh, I think I think it's okay to agree right here. I mean, okay, can, I agree with you. Dad. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I win again. That's good. Um, so the the dad debate. We got to do a dad topic, and I thought, you know, what other dad topic uh, to throw out there? In, it's summertime. Uh, you see, you know, it's hot. Uh, every once in a while, you want to throw on a good pair of shorts, and sometimes you want to make those cargo shorts or jorts. Um, so the topic is Kyle. Cargo shorts 
and jorts. Party favor or party foul? No, look, you know this. It's a party foul. No way. No. Yeah. I mean, look. Get out of here. It, it is a party foul because my date to the party tells me it's a party foul. Well, that doesn't matter. My date to the party tells me it's a party foul too, but I still know that it's awesome. Yeah, but you and I both know that Oh God, if I say this, my, my date to the party's gonna get this. <laughs> <laughs> and, roll with it, man. My, so nobody's listening, it's just me and you talking. Come on. Oh, just me and you said, fine. Okay. Um <laughs> there's a lot more loving if as long as it's a as long as I keep the party favor and, and do the do the things that she wants. Okay. Well, I understand that. I mean, that's, that's a good argument there, but let me just, let me throw you a couple of reasons why I feel like cargo shorts specifically are a good way to go for, for the dads out there. And if you're a dad out there and you, and you rock the cargo shorts, give us some love. Uh, oh yeah. See, uh, Josh says jorts party favors all day. He does, uh, but go ahead and read the comment right above. Yeah, well, that and lady, that, that lady doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't even know how she got oh, on here. Oh, uh, somebody needs to, know. somebody needs to uh, check. Oh, yeah. like, there's the a listener, Suzanne Draper. That is the listeners uh, need to know. This is Mrs. Draper. This is mama Draper. This is the one that runs that house. You're sitting in right now. It is. But at the end of the day, she knows that, you know, Daddy Draper has needs, and sometimes those needs are cargo shorts. Because let, let me just put it to you this way, Kyle. Sometimes, you know, you want to put on a pair of comfy shorts. Then you're like, man, I got too much stuff in my hands. Okay, well, I'll put something in my right pocket. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I'll put something in my left pocket. Well, I still maybe have my keys or my sunglasses or something. You need more compartments. You need more compartments in oh. those shorts. And all you got to do is just pull out that little cargo area down there, stuff something in. Or nowadays, hey, let me put it in COVID terms here. This is an example from today. So today we go and look at a lake house that I was telling you about earlier. Um, I had my keys. I had my wallet. I had my phone. And I had my mask because I am a law-abiding citizen or I'm a citizen that cares about others and I wear a mask. So I had all these things. It would have been awesome to be able to rip open the cargo part of my cargo shorts and stuff my mask down in there when I'm on my car ride. Cause the people that wear the mask in the car, man, they're, that's just weird. You're uh, in the car. Just throw the mask on the, uh, no, on the dash man. and be done gotta, with it. I've got to, I got to keep it right here. Um, and you know, could have pulled my mask out of my cargo shorts and right there, man. So I am all on board shorts. You know, I, I do. I, I appreciate George and the fact that, Hey, you can have, you're in blue jeans. You're walking outside. You start breaking the sweat and you're like, man, I wish these were short. And there you go. Just trim them off and you got jorts. Come on, man. You, you know, this, this is awful. Let me, let me guess. Let me guess. You want to throw on, you want to rock your, either your jorts or your cargo shorts with your white new balances and white socks hitting about mid calf. Does that sound about right? Well, normally I would say yes. I'm more of a uh, white sock mid calf, like a crew cut sock, but then some sandals to go along with. Um, okay. You know, back in the day it was Birkenstocks. Uh, I mean, I'd still rock the Birkenstocks if they had them out right now, but, or well, if they were the cool thing to do, I guess you could say. I, does, does it really matter to the cool thing? We're dads. We're the coolest. Well, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. I can't wait to the day when our kids are like middle school age and I get to show up in like what I'm wearing right now, basketball shorts and a hoodie and a hat backwards and show up to their school and be like, all right, come on, let's go with, with like my crew cut socks and my sandals. That's going to be awesome. I can't. See, that's the thing. It's not sandals anymore, right? It's crew cut socks and Crocs. Ah, Bonus yeah. points if you get the, the camo Crocs. See, I've, I've never done the Crocs thing. I, 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 I can't. I can't pull that look off, nor do I want to. I just feel like that plastic, man, be rubbing up against your feet. And, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Full good. disclosure, I have a pair of brown of Crocs. I have a pair of brown Crocs. Because you think Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback and the best player in the league. Well, at okay, the Crocs. No, look, you yeah. are so full of crap. But they ha they have like this like fake fur lining, so they're nice and warm and keep my little toes toasty in the winter. Uh, yep, there you go. Spoken like a real man right there. I'll tell you what. Keep your toesies warm in the winter. I like it. <laughs> well, uh, again, if you are uh, checking us out, we appreciate the comments from Josh and Mrs. Draper. Mrs. Draper giving the uh, sick emoji, I'm guessing, when we're talking about the uh, the cargo shorts. And Josh, we'll check out that YouTube. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably he's the real men of genius. Yeah, that's that's pretty uh, pretty hilarious. The best one's the, the Mr. Pickle Pig's Feet Eater. Um, yes. But, um, Anyways, all right, Kyle, let's get on. We've got just uh, just about 10 minutes left in the show, and, and I think we can really fill that with a lot of this talk right here. Um, you know, as we look across the landscape of sports, so we've got 
Uh, let's talk about just kind of the major sports here. We've got baseball has started back, 60-game season. Uh, we've already had teams miss games because of COVID t- positive tests. Who knows what the rest of that's going to look like. They even, have, I think, tossed out in the in the last day or so the, the, the possibility of the playoffs being in a bubble. Um, you've got the NBA back uh, within a bubble. You've got MLS back within a bubble. Uh, college football, NFL look like they're coming down the pop line. And then we've got hockey, uh, the NHL, who has just kind of started back up in Edmonton as well. Um, so the, the question for us to debate, Kyle, is the 2020 sports champions, and we'll, t- we'll t- kind of talk major sports here, um, should they have an asterisk? Because if you, if you revert back to 1999, the San Antonio Spurs uh, played in what was a, a shortened NBA season, and they won the first of their five uh, NBA titles of, of that dynasty, the Duncan dynasty. But everybody said because of that short season, they should have an asterisk. So my question to you is, will all the 2020 sports champions for this year, should they have an asterisk beside them? Yeah, so no, they shouldn't. Like, we are all in um, – We're I say we. All the teams are playing under the same circumstances. Um, they're, they're dealing with the same situations. Um, if, if I felt like there was some sort of uh, – you know, impropriety or somebody, there was a team with, with better, uh, uh, bettering themselves illegally than yes, definitely, um, something that, that you would put an asterisk for. But if, if you're just saying like, Hey, because it's a shortened season or Hey, because we're in bubbles or whatever you want to say, there's no reason to put an asterisk because it's the same for every team. So like Barry Bonds breaking the home run record, put an asterisk. We know he was using steroids. But that, that there's a difference there. Yeah, but I think it, I I get what you're saying, but I disagree. And the reason that I disagree, uh, of course, because this being the dad debate, but the main reason I disagree is I'm not saying that they that everybody's not necessarily on the even playing field for this season because I think that's the case. I think you you brought that up very eloquently uh, in your in your argument there. But if you if you're comparing champions over the course of years and years and years, and you're saying this is what it takes to win a championship, they are not having the same uh, qualifications to win a championship as the years from 2019, 2018, and so on and so forth. And so that's why I think ultimately, specifically baseball, they're cutting out 100 games of their season. Uh, without a doubt, there's so much that could go on. Players can get injured. Uh, there could be all kinds of stuff that goes on. So I think without a doubt, you look at really kind of across the board, I think you have to throw an asterisk in. And it's not to discredit their championship. They're still the champions of that year. But I think everybody's going to go back and say, but that was 2020. Baseball only played 60 games. All these other sports teams took all this time off. So teams that may not have been healthy down the stretch got a chance to get healthy, the Lakers, and come back and have a chance to win it. And so I think when you compare apples to apples and say the 2020 champion versus the 2010 versus the 99 versus the 2003, there has to be an asterisk because they're not accomplishing the same things that those teams did. Okay. I, I, I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to agree with you here, but I'm going to agree with part of what you said. The NHL, the NBA – I agree. There is some impropriety there. There is something that doesn't fit because there was a long break where teams could get healthy. And yes, the Lakers are one of them. And that's why the Lakers are going to go on and win the NBA title. That's because the MVP is going to be Anthony Davis. You know that, Kyle. Come on. You, you, you found that out on Dad's Watching Sports this past week. Okay. LeBron's going to be the MVP. And He's you not can even say the best here. On his own team, man. Look, on. I'm not even saying that he is. I'm just saying, like, there's no way that the sports writers are going to vote for. Anthony Davis over LeBron. Like, it's LeBron, right? And in this age of social justice, and he is the face of social justice, they're going to give it to LeBron. No way. You're wrong. So, anyway, It didn't get much more social justice than the Unibrow. Oh, come on. Anyways, look. But when you're talking about baseball, when every team is, is playing their 60 games, and even if they don't, they're dealing with COVID. We're, they're, we're all, they're, they're all dealing with COVID. You can't put an asterisk. Uh, I think it's stupid, just to be really honest, to compare – um, championship teams from from different eras or whatever, and 2020 might be its own era, right? But that doesn't mean that they deserve an asterisk. That just means like, hey, they won it in 2020 with all this other crap going on. I still disagree with you, man. I I, I know I, you do because you're wrong. Well, no, I do because I'm right. Because at the, again, at the end of the day, you can't compare that championship team to the years past. They are they are having we're comparing. They are the champion. Yeah, but they're not having. They're not accomplishing the same the same feat uh, against the odds that other teams from years past had to do. 
And so but, I think, but neither is neither is the 2019 champion versus the 2018 champion. Things change year to year. It's not the same feat every year. Yes, but it, it really is, especially if you look at baseball no. because they're playing a hundred less games. How what what difference could happen over the course of a hundred games? A million different things. You saw with the Nationals last year; they were one of the worst teams in baseball to the All Star break. And then what happened after the All Star break? I, I got you, stride. but okay. that okay, so but that doesn't mean that that there's any less. Or, or there, there, there's a reason that this World Series champion, whoever it is, probably the Dodgers or the Yankees, doesn't deserve the same. Re- well, I know you would because you don't want to have to pay a hundred bucks to see either mine or Matt's charity, right? That's right. Check out um, the ads watching sports if you have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you got to check out the Sunday show. That's one thing we're definitely not going to debate. Check out the Sunday show. Absolutely. Oh, I like that. That was good there. <laughs> That's a nice teaser. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, continue funny. with your thought. I don't even know what my thought is. You threw me off. <laughs> exactly. That's what a winner does. I distract and then I go in for the kill. <laughs> no, but like, let's let's just be really honest. A champion is a champion, and regardless of whether you're playing 162 games or 60, or you only get in 54 because you had to miss some for COVID, you're still a champion. You still went in to whatever season you had and proved you were the best. That's what matters. You know, Kyle, you you're you're so impassioned, um, you're so believable, you're you're just you're you're really good with words. Uh, you can tell you're a teacher because you're you're eloquent in your 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 presentation. But at the end of the day, man, you're just flat out wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but you are just flat out wrong in this debate. So have um, you seen have you seen Joshua Van Dyke and his crap comments as well? That's right, listener. I'm calling them crap. Yeah, I do. He says, but what about all the teams that get uh, – here, I'll, let me – I think I can actually put this up on the screen. Here we go. But what about all the teams that get shorter schedules? Sorry, Joshua, I'm just figuring all this stuff out. So uh, what about the teams that get shorter schedules because other teams cancel? Exactly, Kyle. You know, I mean, what about teams that are playing against these teams that that, that are uh, losing their, their games here? Look, uh, I just can't get over – I can't get over. We got three dudes faces on here and knowing my wife and knowing your wife and now seeing Joshua with his wife. I don't understand how any of us got our wives. To be really honest. There's no debate there. There's Zero no debate, debate there whatsoever. Um, for, and for those of you that are interested in seeing the emoji that Mrs. Draper put up when I said, we were talking about George, look at that cute little guy down there. That kid. is a cute little dude. It is. Zero um, debating it. There's uh that's that's the emoji she threw up. So at this point, I think we're just playing around with the Facebook comments. We but. are, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, we're just. But gonna- no, like at the end of the day, you can't put an asterisk when some when a team wins whatever, however the sport decides they're going to do it. When they win that championship, they've won the championship, and that's what matters. I'm not de- I'm not denying that they've won the championship. I just think that there should be an asterisk, and I think all of social media and all of sports fans alike. will Okay, agree. fine. Don't put an asterisk. Just say like, hey, we're not going to put them at the top when we rank all of our champions because they did it with in less games or with a long break or however it is that plays out. Yeah. Still doesn't well, deserve an asterisk. Somewhere there'll be a, uh, a little graphic that's created. And like, I think of like the Larry O'Brien trophy from basketball, you know, they'll have the gold base and the basketball and then it'll just be a mask over the basketball. And that can be the representative of – uh, a COVID shortened season. So, well, Kyle, man, it has been fun. Uh, it has been fun. Listeners out there, we want you to uh, hit us up and let us know who you think, you know, between our topics of uh, top 100 NFL players, uh, the asterisk for 2020 champions and the great dad debate of shorts, uh, cargo shorts and jorts. Who is the winner? I know you're going to go with me, but we would love to hear from you as well. Um, cool. you know, it's, it's been fun, man. And uh, coming up this next week on Dad's Watching Sports, you also want to check us out there as well. Download our show anywhere you want. Uh, if you were trying to download the Dad Debate show, uh, if you're interested in downloading that, it'll be in the Dad's Watching Sports feed. So just if you're subscribed to that feed, it'll automatically download uh, here in just a little bit. So, and y'all can go back and listen over and over about how I whipped his tail tonight. Yeah, something like that. So he is Kyle Castles. I am Michael Draper. This has been the Dad Debate presented by Dads Watching Sports. Check out the RTF Sports Network. They put a lot of good content out, a lot of good shows every single week. We just happen to be one of them, and we appreciate them and everything that they do. But we will be back with you on Sunday night live here on the RTF Sports Network Facebook page and our Facebook page. Uh, we've got some great guests coming up on that show as well, and we'll talk about What's up? What else is coming up in the world of sports? So we'll see you next time. Y'all take care, everybody.